everyone, welcome back to Fluent English with Podcast. Your host, Sophie, here. And I'm Alan, your vocabulary boosting buddy. Ready to learn some awesome new words today? You bet, Alan. We've got seven gems to add to your English toolbox. Listen up. Relationship. Improvement. Failure. Skill. Implication. Outcome. Advantage. Wow, that's a vocabulary power pack. All right, how about we start with improvement? Excellent choice. Improvement means getting better at something. It's like taking a skill and making it stronger. Like that time you finally mastered that tricky guitar solo, Sophie? Big improvement. Hey, but seriously, improvement can be big or small. Here are some examples. One, I'm practicing my English every day to improve my speaking skills. Two, my cooking has improved a lot since I started taking that online class. Three, I studied hard for the test, so I hope to see some improvement in my grade. Four, I'm trying to improve my running time. Five, he needs some improvement on his math homework. Six, with a little practice, you'll see a big improvement in your game. Those are brilliant examples, Sophie. Now let's listen to a conversation where someone talks about improvement. Hi, David. How's your tennis practice going? Hey, Sarah. It's going well. I feel like I'm making some real improvement with my backhand. That's fantastic. Remember all those extra drills we did last week? Exactly. They're really paying off. I feel much more confident now. That's great to hear. Keep practicing, and you'll be a tennis pro in no time. Maybe not a pro, but I definitely want to keep improving. Absolutely. Practice makes perfect, as they say. What did you think of that conversation, Sophie? I thought it showed a positive attitude towards improvement. David is happy to see his friend getting better and encourages him to keep practicing. Totally. Remember, improvement takes time and effort, but it's always a good thing. Exactly. Now, are you ready for the next word on our list? Absolutely. Let's keep building those vocabulary muscles. All right, our next word is relationship. This word refers to the way two people or things are connected. It can be used for friendships, family bonds, or even how things work together. Like the relationship between coffee and a good morning, right? Essential. Exactly. Here are some examples to understand relationship better. One, I have a great relationship with my brother. Two, she needs to work on her relationship with her boss. Three, there's a strong relationship between exercise and good health. Four, hey, even a podcast like ours is about building a relationship with our listeners. We want to connect and help you learn English. Love that, Sophie. Here are two more examples. Five, we've been neighbors for years, but we don't have much of a relationship. Six, this book explores the relationship between historical events and social change. Those are clear examples, Sophie. Now let's listen to a conversation where someone uses the word relationship. Hey, Anna, how are things going with your new neighbor? Hi, John. It's actually going really well. We've been chatting a lot, and I think we're building a good relationship. That's fantastic. Having a friendly neighbor makes a big difference. Absolutely. We even plan to have a barbecue together next weekend. Sounds like fun. A barbecue is a great way to strengthen a new relationship. See how Anna is happy about building a good relationship with her neighbor? Exactly. And John is encouraging her by suggesting ways to strengthen it. All right, Alan, next up is failure. Now, this one might sound a little scary, but it just means not being successful at something the first time you try. Exactly. We all experience failure sometimes, even me. Remember that time I tried to cook a fancy French dish and, well, let's just say it wasn't a culinary masterpiece. Don't worry, Alan. It happens to the best of us. Here are some examples to illustrate failure. One, I failed my driving test the first time, but I passed on the second try. Two, don't be discouraged if you fail a test. You can always study harder and try again. Three, sometimes even the best athletes experience failure. Four. It's important to learn from your failures and try to improve. Five, failure is a part of life, but it doesn't have to define you. Six, don't give up after a failure. Keep trying and you'll eventually succeed. Those are great examples, Sophie. Now let's listen to a conversation where someone talks about failure. 
Hey Alex, how did your job interview go today? Ugh, it didn't go well. I think I failed. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, I was really nervous and fumbled a few questions. Don't feel bad. Everyone gets nervous at interviews. Don't let this one failure discourage you. You're right. Maybe I can learn from this experience and do better next time. Exactly. There are always more opportunities out there. Keep your head up. Thanks. I appreciate the encouragement. What are your thoughts on that conversation, Sophie? I think it highlights the importance of a positive attitude after failure. Alex's friend encourages them to learn and keep trying. Absolutely. Remember, failure is a chance to grow and improve. Don't let it stop you from reaching your goals. Couldn't agree more. Now, are you ready for the next word on our vocabulary adventure? You bet. Let's keep learning. All right, Alan, our next word is skill. This one is all about having the ability to do something well. Exactly. It can be anything from playing a musical instrument to riding a bike to speaking English like a pro. Almost there, Alan, but we're getting better every day. Here are some examples to show what skill means. 1. She is a very talented artist. She has a great skill for painting. 2. I'm learning a new language. It takes practice to develop that skill. 3. He's a skilled soccer player. He's been playing for many years. 4. What skills do you think are important for a good job? 5. Cooking is a valuable skill to have. 6. With a little practice, you can develop your writing skills. Those are fantastic examples, Sophie. Now, let's listen to a conversation where someone talks about a skill. Hi, Michael. I love your guitar playing. You're so skilled. Hey, Ben. Thanks. I've been practicing for a few years now. It shows. You make it look so easy. Well, it takes a lot of practice, but I really enjoy it. Do you give lessons? I'd love to learn how to play. Sure. I'd be happy to teach you the basics. That would be amazing. Thanks so much, Michael. No problem, Ben. See you next week. What did you think of that conversation, Sophie? I thought it showed how developing a skill can lead to new opportunities. Michael's skill with the guitar allows him to teach others and share his passion. Absolutely. Remember, anyone can develop a skill with practice and dedication. What skills are you interested in learning, Sophie? Well, I'd love to improve my baking skills. Maybe you could be my guinea pig for some taste tests? Only if you promise to improve your joke-telling skills as well. Hey, all right, deal. Sounds like a plan. Now, are you ready for the next word on our list? Absolutely. Let's keep building those vocabulary muscles. All right, Alan, word number five is implication. This one might sound a bit complex, but it's actually quite simple. An implication is something that is suggested or hinted at, but not directly said. Like a secret message hidden in plain sight? Exactly. Here are some examples to show you how implication works. One, she said she was too busy to help, which implied she wasn't interested. Two, there were dark clouds gathering, implying a storm was coming. Three. His silence implied he didn't agree with the plan. 4. Be careful about the implications of your words. They can be misunderstood. 5. The movie had a happy ending, but there were some darker implications throughout the story. 6. It's important to read between the lines and understand the implications of what people say. Those are great examples, Sophie. Now, let's listen to a conversation where someone talks about implications. Hey, Emily, did you hear about the cancellation of the company picnic? No, I didn't. What happened? They haven't given an official reason, but they mentioned budget cuts, which implies there might be financial problems. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's a bit worrying. We'll have to wait and see what happens. You're right, but thanks for letting me know about the implications. No problem, Emily. What are your thoughts on that conversation, Sophie? I think it highlights the importance of considering the implications of information, even if it's not directly stated. Absolutely. Remember, sometimes you need to think beyond the words themselves to understand the full meaning. Exactly. Now, are you ready for the next word on our vocabulary adventure? You bet. Let's keep learning. All right, Alan, for word number six, we have outcome. This one is all about the result of a situation or event. Like the ending of a story? Exactly. It can be good, bad, or somewhere in between. So the outcome of that delicious cake you baked yesterday was, 
crumbs all over the kitchen floor? Maybe we should stick to vocabulary for now, Alan. Here are some examples to illustrate outcome. One, the outcome of the election was a surprise to everyone. Two, I studied hard for the test, so I'm hoping for a good outcome. Three, it's important to consider all the possible outcomes before making a decision. Four, the outcome of the peace talks remains uncertain. Five, he worked hard and achieved a positive outcome. Six, we won't know the final outcome of the game until the very last minute. Those are great examples, Sophie. Now let's listen to a conversation where someone talks about an outcome. Hi, David. So how did your job interview go? Hey, Sarah, I'm not sure yet. The interview went well, but they said they wouldn't know the outcome for a few days. Ah, I see. The waiting can be the hardest part. You're right. I'm trying to stay positive and hope for a good outcome. Absolutely. Just focus on the things you can control and try not to worry about the outcome. That's good advice. Thanks, Sarah. No problem, David. Good luck. What did you think of that conversation, Sophie? I think it showed the uncertainty that can come with waiting for an outcome. Absolutely. Remember, sometimes you have to be patient and accept that you can't control the outcome of every situation. Exactly. Now, are you ready for the last word on our vocabulary list today? You bet. Let's keep expanding those English brains. All right, Alan, for our last word today, we have advantage. This one means something that gives you a benefit or a positive position in a situation. Like having the home court advantage in a basketball game. Exactly. Here are some examples to show you how advantage works. One, speaking English fluently gives you a big advantage in today's job market. Two, I studied for the test beforehand, so I had an advantage over some of the other students. Three, it's important to be aware of your opponent's advantages and weaknesses. Four, using public transportation can be an advantage if you live in a big city. Five. He has the advantage of experience in this field. 6. Knowing multiple languages is a great advantage to have. Those are fantastic examples, Sophie. Now, let's listen to a conversation where someone talks about an advantage. Hi, Maria. How's your art project coming along? Hey, Ben. It's going well. I think I have an advantage this time. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, I remembered to buy all the supplies I needed beforehand, unlike last time. That's a definite advantage. Remember the all-nighter you pulled because you forgot the paintbrushes? Exactly. No all-nighters this time, hopefully. Sounds like a plan. Good luck with your project. Thanks, Ben. What did you think of that conversation, Sophie? I think it showed how being prepared can give you a big advantage. Absolutely. Remember, a little planning ahead can make a big difference in any situation. Exactly. And that's it for our vocabulary adventure today. We learned seven fantastic words to add to your English toolbox. Don't forget to practice using these new words in your conversations. Absolutely. And remember, if you're ever stuck, come back and listen to this episode again. Happy learning, everyone. See you next time.